Hello there. Hi there. I'm Whitney. I'm David. And we are talking tech review day. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go there. Um, so today's tech review, we are actually going to be talking about a piece of equipment that we not too long ago um, decided to develop in our, or I guess build in our lab, fabricate right. in our lab. But we want to talk about it kind of just more holistically. Right. Um, and what it does and why it's important. So we're going to be talking about the freeze thaw, freeze thaw shaper, ASTM C six six six. Six six six. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I, I feel know. like the ASTM is telling. What it, I know yeah. we have cursed it a number of Something times. about that six nine. Right. That's not, we won't get into. We that. won't get into that. So here in the lab, it's really interesting what we do. We we. There's these field cases that we worry about. We're in Colorado, right. so free saw is huge. Free saw is a big problem here. We have ice on the roads, right. and then we have sunny afternoons, cold nights. Colorado is one of the most aggressive places for free saw. Right. You know, one of the kind of funny sayings here is, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. And when I first moved here, I was like, oh, that's whatever. That's not really how it is. But literally one day, I think it was like May, it was like gorgeous and sunny and like 75 degrees. And I went to go pick up um, my son from preschool. And by the time I got back, so 20 minutes later, black skies and it was snowing. Like yeah. literally. So it's like we get very aggressive and then it warms back up that afternoon. So that sort of weather, those sort of extreme changes, like just wreak havoc on concrete. Yeah, without a doubt. And in the wintertime, I mean, it's really pretty cold at night. The right. pavements freeze. Well, then you have the salts and all of that salts. too. But you get that beautiful Colorado mm -hmm. sunshine right. during the day. Right. Pavement, Melts it. Pavement can collect the warmth from the right. sun, mm -hmm. so we get free thaw even on right. a cold day. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, even on a cold day. So, so how do we do that in the lab? I mean, you know, uh, how can we miniaturize that to simulate that here in the lab, and how can we work in the lab here to make a long period of time. Free right. saw is a slow thing on it concrete. Is. It deteriorates over a very long period of time. So we're going to make it small spatially and we're going to shrink time right. to make the, the number of cycles occur more quickly so we can we predict collect the data and collect data and right. predict durability over time. Absolutely. So I came to you and I said, Whitney, what did I say? Do you know I actually feel like I came to you because <laughs> we had an estimate where we were um, we had to do free saw for it, and right. we kept, we, there was a time when we would outsource it, and I was like, David, I think we can do that here. I really do. So David researched it and, you know, started figuring it out, and we went through the whole, you know, rigmarole rigor, of getting it set up. But, but basically what you're doing is a couple different ways to do it. Um, the more automated method is you put concrete um, samples, you cover them by just tiny, tiny bit of water. Not more than an eighth. Not more than an eighth, not less than a 30 seconds. <laughs> so just right. basically you want like it, the surface just barely just covered. Up, yeah. um, and then you are doing freezing and, and thawing cycles. What, 300 cycles, right, is what you have to do. 300 and 666, six, six, right. And 666. Six, six. And then there's specifications for, you know, the amount of time. But ideally, it's what every four to, four to five hours, I think, is when you have to have a, a freeze and thaw cycle take place. Five hours or less. Yeah, so, that's right. Can't be, I think it can't be less than three, can't be more than five. Right. So you go through these, these cycles of, you know, the chamber freezing and then warming up so you're you're putting this this the concrete in a, an aggressive environment and like david said you know seeing how it holds up to it and then you have to take readings every so often and then you're doing a mass loss as well as that's right dynamic modulus doing mass loss which is what it says you just right. weigh, weigh it, it you know yeah. take the difference and then you do the dynamic uh, modulus, which we talked about in another right. video. Right. What, just in a nutshell, dynamic modulus. What is it measuring? Um, you tap it. You tap concrete with a hammer, and the wave propagation. Uh, the stiffer it is, the faster the wave travels. Okay. So you measure how uh, fast the wave travels. Change that into response spectra. And right. then you can calculate the modulus from that. And the more it's breaking apart, the more brittle it's going to be, uh, theoretically. Course. That's the other issue. If it cracks through, the travel distance shorter, you can monitor right. that. If it has lots of little cracks, it slows it down. Right. So you can, but you actually you have to do your dynamic uh, modulus measurements when it's thawed and not frozen. That's right. So, so here, so 
we decided to do it. We we had a freezer, a right. regular old freezer. Yeah, that didn't work. Didn't work. We had to get a commercial freezer. Yeah. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah, the gradient just wasn't great enough. No. It just couldn't couldn't drive the five right. hour cycle. Right. So we uh Ordered a pretty, yeah. pretty darn expensive yes. freezer, but it's doing the job. It's doing the job. It's running the test, which is great. Yeah. Um, but it's and it, you know there have been so many times where like oh, that test and we have a nickname for it that we probably shouldn't <laughs> say here. But I mean it as much as as frustrating as that has been, you know, here in our lab at times we've got things running and it's a it's a great test. Like it gives you some incredibly important data, especially for for places like Colorado or you know what probably Minnesota and Michigan like places that have severe severe environments and you need to be able to see how your concrete is going to stand up to that that's right those sort of cycles and just that freezing and happens in the world we have to right. have a way to measure that scientifically absolutely so we bring in the lab and we measure it scientifically right. we drive the cycles uh, we, 300 cycles is golly probably several years worth of field Well, field not in Colorado, but in normal places, yes. Yeah. We'd probably so. hit that in a week and a half in Colorado. Just yeah. kidding, it's not that aggressive here. But yeah. And we're driving it with, um, <laughs> uh, we have a feedback loop. Right, absolutely. We're using uh, some external uh, temperature sure. uh, devices to uh, drive and hold the temperature where right. we want it. And we're right. using timers to drive and right. hold, hold the time where we want right. it. So it's, Two boundary, con well, kind of three boundary conditions really. You've got time, you've right. got the cycles, you've got the fall, which is 40 degrees Fahrenheit right. plus or minus three. You've got the freeze, which is zero degrees Fahrenheit plus sure. or minus three. I do have to say, I'm a little surprised that they don't have you in the ASTM go a little higher on the heat. Because 40, like, I feel like, you're, like your concrete really can pretty much just about be frozen. So, like, it's barely thawed. I mean, I realize with the specification, like, you can only be so aggressive on your parameters, but I was definitely a little surprised that they didn't want a little bit yeah. you know, higher on the temperature. Yeah, I don't disagree with that comment. I think it's to simulate winters. Sure. You know, no, more traditional winters, so not so much. 70 degrees right. and zero. That's, I know. That's and again, a, that's a Colorado thing. It's not yeah, a... Yeah. Yeah. But I think part of the key to that, as you know, is the spec calls you to measure that at the center of a control specimen. Sure. So it, you're right in the very center That's of, true. of the beam. So, so you are getting a, an accurate reading of what's going on so in the concrete. Essentially, the whole beam has to be, for the very center sure. to be at 40, That's true. the whole beam has to be at, at 40 least... 40 degrees or, at, or at higher. Or higher. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So yeah, so it, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting test. I it is. I think it's a great test for simulating field conditions. Right, and it, and it gives you just invaluable data. Invaluable data. I mean, I just can't. How else are you going to say a pavement's going to hold up? Sure. You know, in aggressive winter oh, environments, sure. there's no other test to, to do it. But yeah, six six six. Six six six. <laughs> All well, right. There you have it. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Whitney. I'm David. That's a quick overview of 666. That is Go Concrete. Eat asphalt.